Hi everyone, my name is Nilesh Mathure and today we have with us Laurel Papworth and Vinit. So you already know Laurel, uh, but if not, uh, please uh, check Laurel's uh, website and her blog. Laurel is a social media expert in every sense and uh, she's contributed a lot to the community. So thanks Laurel for uh, joining again and uh, welcome Vinit. So Vinit uh, is the founder of uh, Easy Collab, and Easy Collab is a LMS platform driven by like a community. So uh, Laurel has some experience with Easy Collab, I would say, but uh, she has a lot more, uh, you know, understanding of LMS as well as community. So who better to talk about LMS platforms and community than Laurel? So uh thanks thanks guys for joining hey Vinit. yes mm. hi laurel like, so, hi nilesh like so, thank you for having me um here on your show today so yes like so this is great and a uh, welcome laurel to the show as well <laughs> thank you okay so what we're going to do is we're going to do a new format i'm going to get off the screen laurel you run it and then we have some folks already joining so, guys, we're going to do two giveaways of tier one Easy Collab licenses at the end of this uh, at the end of the stream. So, uh, stay tuned, be engaged, ask questions. And, uh, uh, I'll, I'll run into the next scene, and Laurel, you can take it from here. Thanks. Hi, Vanit. <laughs> hi. I was. I was hoping the first thing that we could do for me and for everyone else is if you could show us Easy Collab and so people can get a tactical feel for what the whole LMS looks like. Sure, definitely. So let me quickly share my screen. And just give me a kind of heads up if you can see my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? No, I think um, Nilesh needs to share it or something. Does he? Yes. Oh, there we are. Uh, Wrong screen, okay, so maybe. Now, Here we go. Okay. So, uh, um, yes, like, so hi, everyone. So now this is a preview of, of our like, demo academy that we use in like, an easy collab. So, and um, this is how, um, this is, okay. Um, so before we begin with anything, right? Like so as most LMSs, like we have three uh, um, user categories. So one is the, like, so the admin, second is like, the instructor, and third is a student. So, and like, so the admin has more functionalities when compared to the like, so instructor and student is just a person that buys your uh, course. 
So, and what you're seeing right now is Alex with admin dashboard. So and like we have some like uh, beautiful Excel analytics over here uh, that can uh, kind of like, help you out in like, all kinds of things. And before I like, even move into like uh, most of the things, right? So let me give you a brief overview of the mission of Easy Collab and like what is the purpose of the like, Easy Collab, right? So uh, kind of like so our mission is to help course creators create fun and interactive courses while having high student completion rates. So, and like, why is this our mission might be your question. So for this, right, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, papers prior to developing the product, kind of like research papers, surveys and everything. And we have found out that the average course completion rate in the, um, like in the, like the online course market is just about three to 4%. Yes, and 67% of the students said that the main reason for this is the lack of collaboration and communication between the course creator and them. So, and like, this is the pain point that we are trying to solve so that course creators can make really fun and interactive courses to provide amazing learning experience to students while having high student completion rates. Fine, right? Uh, yes, and uh, yes, and the purpose of high student completion rates is so that like you now you can get like more sales in the future. So kind of like, according to a survey from the like, Udemy and Coursera, so they have found that like they have found that like, every successful student for a particular course they have rec um, they have recommended and gotten two to four sales during their lifetime of the course. So, which means if you have 100 students completing your course, that is almost equivalent to 400 future sales, organic and word of mouth. So, so this is exactly what we're trying to help course creators achieve. So, and uh, yeah, so, and so kind of, like I said, because we are all focused on like community like, so engagement and collaboration, right? So uh, this is what a dashboard, uh, uh, this is what a dashboard would also like look like. So which show like how like, so engaging your community is and like, so how many active students you have, like, you know, how many total posts you have by students, by like so instructors. So you're seeing a lot of community like, so engagement like, so aspects in the dashboard. Again, so kind of like you're also uh, figuring out like what are the top active courses. So again, like I said, right, you want to make your course engaging and fun. So that's the goal here. Yes, and uh, kind of like uh, moving on to like uh, what you guys want to see is probably like so how can I create a course, right? So like we have a really kind of like a, a four step methodology here, which is like super easy and clean where you can just create your course in less than I guess five minutes. So like first up, so right, so kind of like you, uh, first up, you can create two types of things. So one is a course or a community. So a community- By the way, just I, like I just, I just want to confirm, it took me five minutes to do a course this morning, to put a course up. <laughs> awesome, awesome, yeah, so that's, uh, uh, yeah, so kind of like we have got like a person that has this limit testified to that. So awesome, uh, thank you. I just want to yeah, say, because uh, we've all seen the LMSs where everybody says it's only five minutes to put up a course. And then when you get in, in there, you realize, no, it's not. This is three weeks worth of work. So I'm correct. confirming uh, so it is five let minutes. Me, <laughs> correct. Um, so let me just show you like so how we can actually create the course in about five minutes. Okay, so let me try and take up the challenge. So for me, it's about 8.40 a.m. So let me try to take up the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, so over here, so let's say that when you want to make a course, right? So uh, there's like a simple form for you to fill up. So which takes about a minute and just where you can customize the course. And once you're done, you just kind of click the submit button so that the course is created on the screen here. And like once when the course is created, like so all you have to do is now start adding modules to the course. For example, my course is already selected. And suppose if I want to add a new module, I just click new module and I start getting all of the modules here again. And and now with like so each module, if I want to add a sub module, I just have to click new sub module and here I just choose the module type. So do I want to have only text or a video or do I want to have presentation or a survey? And like once when I choose it, so just fill up like a few fields. So basically if you have your content with you on a Google doc or something, so you can just paste it up and just uh, kind of finish it in like just a few minutes. So it's pretty simple. 
So, and um, yes, and like some of you might have a question about like you know, hosting and third party integrations for videos and everything, right? So kind of like when you choose the video, so we have a bunch of options for you so that you can use the best means for you for your course. So kind of the first option is with a video URL. For example, if you want to use like YouTube on listed, you could use or, or, or suppose like we also support like Dropbox URLs also works. And um, yes, and suppose if you want to customize the video player, moving on to option two, so like now you can just put in an iframe. For example, you could use Vadu TV, Vimeo, Vistia, any of the platform, customize the player, like so customize the security of your video and just like, so embed the like, so iframe over here to your needs. And suppose if you don't have any of the third party services, you can always upload a video to our own servers where it will be secure and it's going to be like super fast for your users as well. So it's uh, as simple as that. So doing the video. So basically, like, you no, know, you don't even have to worry about like, you know, using your storage if you have like, any other third party services. And yes, and like, when you have YouTube, life is easy. Uh, so that's with that. And like once when you are done with modules, um, so kind of like uh, you can uh, kind of like probably uh, just like walk through uh, uh, some kind of like the drip setting. So, um, so kind of like you can customize your learning module. Uh, so kind of like we have five types of like so drip available here. So uh, basically uh, one is kind of like days after joining the course. So basically suppose if you want to like uh, release your modules after certain days, the student has barred. So you can just like put in the days uh, for your sub modules again. So that like students don't take in a lot of like, efforts and just like rush through the course. And suppose if you want a specific date, so this is really helpful if you're running like monthly cohorts or weekly cohorts or something like that, so that you release it on a specific day. And then like we also have a manual release option. So suppose if you want like a more customized, so this is a useful if you are doing like flash sales. So kind of like you want to do like a 24 hour sale for a particular module or something, you can just like lock and unlock that particular module during that flash sale only again and then like we have kind of like can i just confirm is lock and unlock like making something draft and publish draft and publish lock and unlock no uh so kind of like how like lock and un unlock works is suppose if you want the module to be published just for a specific uh, uh um just for a specific period of time so kind of like um so kind of like when it is locked right so like students won't be able to like, so access it but it's going to be published so like no, this is not that oh so they can see it but they can't get into it until you're ready exactly okay okay thank you sorry <laughs> carry on <laughs> yes and finally like we have like a systematic uh, way kind of like you no know, when you go like one after the little other uh you kind of like you no know, you go to module two after finishing module one and three after finishing one and two and so on and finally, if you want uh, like all the modules to be like released immediately, so this like an so immediate release. So and like once when you're happy with it, and so you can also preview the course easily. Like suppose uh, suppose if you want to see like now how the course is looking out. So kind of like so this is like a uh, this is like a course uh, this is like a course thumbnail that we called, which can also be customized. So you can really have your uh, kind of like a snapshot and be like no hi all welcome to my course or something like that. So it just makes it even more fun. And now if you saw that like the so drip settings was set to like the so immediate like the release. So which means it's all the modules are available for the students whenever they want. So it's pretty easy like that. And so let's probably uh, take uh, something. For example, uh, yeah, so this is a kind of like a demo academy. So this is just like a random text that we have. Uh, yes. And the best part, like, like I told our, right? So it's all about a community discussion and the forums that we have. So like students can really ask a question immediately if they have any particular thing about the sub module, for example. So when I just click on ask questions, so kind of like uh, they can read, uh, they can kind of like, immediately like, ask the question for that sub module, which will be seen on the course discussions to all of the students and like, uh, and kind of like so other students can help them out or like you can help them out. So it just kind of like makes a learning experience far superior than like most other platforms again. So kind well, of like where, students... where does the comment function sit? Because that's that's pretty common on all the course platforms. Mm -hmm. But I struggle with it being a matrix. Like I I want the comments to be to appear in certain places but not others, or I want it to appear in a forum. 
so that others can answer it, but not all forums because not all students belong to all forums. And I really, mm -hmm. I'm not keen on that sort of YouTube idea of a YouTube lecture video with comments underneath. I think that's just passe now. Do you understand? Where did where did the comments go? Where where would the students see them? Got it. So kind of like whenever you post a question, right? So we have a separate forum within like, so every course, which is called the course, uh, which is called as the course discussion. So kind of like, so any question being posted about the course like falls into the course discussion. So that like, so it's all visible. So each course is a sub forum. Correct. Like so each course is a oh, forum. So okay. suppose we have like multiple courses. So like you now you have like you now so different like you no know, course discussion forums for like so each of them. And suppose if you have a community, like you now you have just a course discussion forum without any course content in that as well. Um, they okay. are all like you no know, separate to each other. Yeah. I just want to do a shout out to the community because there's quite a few of us that are refugees from New Zenla. And New Zenla <laughs> promised us that functionality two years ago. So I paid two years of annual fees waiting oh, for the wow. community function to be fully brought in and it just wasn't. So um, I just want to say that because quite a few people out there are from NZ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so kind of like we have like a lot more features coming in for the community forum. So kind of like we have kind of like Slack like channels coming in. So that's on our beta right now. So maybe like so I can show that in the end about the community. Suppose if the community wants to just like have a sneak peek of like what is going to come like this Sunday. And so if you see, right, like we are always updating the app week after week to put in like new features and just like make it an amazing platform for course creators to begin courses really easily. So and kind of like we have followed like a social media style community forum. So which is like very familiar to literally everyone. So kind of like you have a like button, you have a comment button. And the best part about it is like you can also post anonymously on the platform. So kind of like students can post anonymously to their peers. So uh, because like you no know, why um, you cannot see the like, so anonymous function here is because because right, so I am in the like, so admin portal. So kind of like we don't have like, so the anonymous portion since you are the course creator. Um, so kind of like when students post anonymously, right, like, so other students will not be able to see their names, uh, but just the like you know, teacher and the like, so admin will still be able to see their name just to avoid a community like, so abuse again. Um, so kind of like students can but we can turn it, anonymous right? off if we don't want it right if the admin doesn't want anonymous we can turn it off yes they can uh, okay. uh i'm so kind of like you know, that would come up in like you no know, manage uh, feature section uh so kind of like when you go to like manage uh, features over here uh, so kind of like you can really customize like so all of the features that you want uh so in your like you no know, academy so kind of like we have a bunch of options that i can probably like as show you in a uh just like a few minutes so that like you, know, you get like more context out of it again so okay. uh that's on that <laughs> So, and um, like I said about a community forum, right? So like we have really made a place that will function like a kind of like a, a similar to a Facebook group and similar to a Slack and similar to a Reddit. So we have taken the best of everything and make an, um, yes, and made a community forum. Um, so kind of, if you take like, we have a built-in like a hashtag system. So kind of which has been like taken off, which was originally from like Twitter, I guess. So kind of like we have taken the best of Twitter as well. So kind of like uh, when you use hashtag, you can see the number of times that it has been used as well. So kind of, let's say if you're talking about some test in your institute, so now students can filter out all of the posts using hashtags. So kind of like, now these are all of the hashtags again. And right, and basically, um, yes, and like one other option that teachers have is they can like, so endorse a good post. So if the post is good, so teachers can just like so endorse that post or a comment saying like, hey, like this is a good question, like which like so others should know. So kind of like they can like so endorse it. And suppose if you want to pin the post, like you could also like pin the post so that like, so others could see as well again. Um, so kind of like we have taken a lot of like small things from like various channels to make it like the best community forum for you again. And so kind of if you see like the knowledge base, so because this is like so the admin portal over here, so kind of like you can like so upload your own background image and kind of like you can add all of your miscellaneous files over here. 
um, such as like PDF files, images files, and suppose if you have any other little articles or blogs that you want to share. So these kind of things could be given out here so that like students can always will, uh, visit our like knowledge base again. It's so kind of uh, um, so kind of little over here, right? So you can customize the image, the name, everything is totally customizable again with the knowledge base. And like finally, like we have uh, we have something called as flashcards, which is similar to like what we call the pocket notes. So kind of like these flashcards, it is like the images like which keep like going in like seconds of like uh, two seconds or like three seconds or something. So that like students can just uh, see flashcards. So, so basically like these, um, yes. And, and suppose if you do not want flashcards in your course, you can always like, you can always take them out from the feature section as well again. Um, so kind of like you see like this, this goes in a loop. So basically suppose if it is just like something quick that you want to give or uh, something like an acronym, so you can really like customize that so that like students get the most value of your course again. And like uh, finally that like when I was taking an online course, the biggest challenge I was facing is like, how do I contact the teacher? Like, where is their email ID? I had no clue. So kind of like we have everything about your little instructor over here. So you can put in your name and like, you can give your little email ID right here. So basically if they want to contact you personally, they can always send you an email and like phone number is optional if you want to give your mobile number or not, so that's up to you. Uh, and so kind of like the you know, students have the best way to contact you immediately if they're so I can I course. can definitely turn all those off can I um yes um so kind of like suppose if you do not want to give anything so you can just like miss you know, hide everything and um, um so kind of like you, know, you can take up the like, instructor panel as well outside again okay. um, that so would good. all be present in the manage uh, features section as well and like some of the features are coming soon as well with like a lot of customizations again and uh, um, yes, and like when we go probably like a little bit deeper into the conversation, I, I will give you another sneak peek of the feature that is coming soon as well. Okay. So, and that's uh, mostly with the course builder and like just like a few things that I would like to say is kind of like uh, we, uh, like I said, right, we are focusing on making your course more like interactive and fun. So kind, uh, so kind of like when you, let's say like when you finish, uh, kind of like when the students finish a module, uh, kind of like you can send a little email automatically, for example, so let's say the students finish the first module, right? So you can just put in like, you no, know, hi, like congratulations on finishing the first module of the course. So kind of like that, so basically like students get like a beautiful learning experience. It's like, wow, like um, uh, uh, kind of like you know, my teacher just congratulated me for, for finishing it. And so basically suppose for the second module or something. So if you can send some other email saying like, you know, so, Hey, like, you no, know, what was the biggest takeaway uh, from this module for you? So kind of like, you, know, you can just like make the course more interactive. You can start with email threads with students. So uh, basically like this makes the learning process more fun for students as well. And similarly, like you know, with like so automatic so emails going through after module. So you can also, have like we have a built-in gamification module over here so you can like, assign badges to students uh, so kind of like you, know, you are free to make your own badges as well so which i'll probably show and like once when you choose the badge right, so the badge is awarded to the students automatically kind of like the you know, students get like a message kind of saying like no you know, hooray like you, know, you have been awarded this badge for finishing so and so task so kind of like that's now, is, like that, a nice is that, is that the only gamification you have is badges uh, for now, uh, we are having only badges, but probably in one of the future updates for the community, right? So uh, we are thinking of bringing up something like uh, something like a community like, so experience points or something. So let's say, suppose if you answer a question correctly, kind of like you, know, you get some like, experience points or suppose if you like post uh, any question or something, you get more experience points. So kind of this can make the community more like so interactive. Like, so does that sound like a good idea to you? Um, yeah, there's a couple of LMSs that have it. Um, the difficulty for the lecturer is often to build out the gamification so that the rewards come. I mean, if you think about it, for me, it's currency or points, uh, badges or awards, and then leaderboards or rankings. You know, they're the three foundations for gamification in courses. The only challenge is, thing, especially with things like forums, is if you give somebody rewards they start leaving tar or thanks or okay 
as a comment on every single post oh, <laughs> because they just want the point. So you, you have to, you know, always balance out. You have to say, okay, we're not going to give them points for that. We'll give them points for the most likes they get. But then they do like what's called like gates where the students come in and they like each other's like a little mm -hmm. little mafia group <laughs> so that they each one of them wins each month i just it, it's just i mean for me it's just as much fun to watch them trying to break the game <laughs> but they are very naughty awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's absolutely yeah. true. Kind of like we were also like not thinking about this like during the feature stage. So kind of like we thought of having like a filter, maybe like um, yes, and maybe like you no, know, you could choose filters like you said, right? So okay, mm -hmm. or just like yes, no kind of thing. So like so all one word answers would not be awarded any badges or something like that. Again, so kind of like we thought of having just, filters. Um, yeah. On gamification, and I don't want to butt in too much to your um, presentation, mm -hmm. but um. What we do, because I teach at university uh, and also at a corporate level as well as online, but particularly online, because the courses are so linear in a digital world, you know, people have to start here and then go to the next one. And that's one of the reasons I hate drip and why there is such low retention on drip is because people actually want section three, but they have to wait two to three weeks to get there. And that was the bit that they needed to solve their problem. Um, so it's always forcing students into in, in gamification. It's called the Dorothy uh, road. So it's the, if you think of, of the, Wizard of Oz, uh, in games, it's it's the yellow brick road. You have to go here, then here, then here. Does that make sense? Like you're following a yellow brick road. So it's always linear. It's always directed. And, you know, we talk about user journeys and directing the user journey, and but it's so static in online courses that um, gamification mm -hmm. gets brought in to free it up, to to bring in surprise, you know, the and that's called the Alice world. I do a lot of work in games. I worked with Sony for 10 years in games. So I sort of know how, you know, it gets developed. Um, in, in the Alice world, which is an open world, like a World of Warcraft or something, uh, people get to roam and and pick and choose like a little like that's why nano courses are so popular with harvard and and the MOOCs, the you know massive online um online course communities the nano courses where they can pick and choose their own buffet uh is is much more popular with the particular game playing generation because they don't like the linear version of online courses so i actually like and i was thinking about your badges i like badges that spring up as a surprise, like you use the word, I don't know, what, what's this one, a, a physics course, you use, you use the word physics 30 times, you get the yeah. overshare a button, or I don't know what you'd call it, but to make it more of a surprise to bring some of that Alice component into what is a very rigid Dorothy world. I don't know if I made any sense there whatsoever, but it's just something that I was thinking about. <laughs> Yeah, like so those were like really good examples for us to take a lot of like, the inspiration for gamification as well. But probably like what I would probably like what I can comment at this state is just uh, probably like, you know, the like development time to like suit the needs for almost all the types of course creators out there. For example, like some course creators may do like recorded courses, some may have live sessions and some can have like mm -hmm. monthly cohorts or like a bunch of different learning models, a bunch of different requirements. So there has to be like a streamlined software. So like you said, like a user journey, right? So maybe that could be taken, but like, yes, like we would definitely contact you again to get like more inspiration on that soon. Oh, no, I'm just, I was just thinking out loud. And, you know, you, you're right, because my, my way of working is I have a live group, and I partner them up, they have to buddy up. So they have mm -hmm. to communicate with each other and co mentor each other. And then we have the live sessions, then they have to watch the recorded course sessions, and then yeah. they have to submit things. And so I'm, I'm always about mixed platforms. I'm, it's never about, uh, 
you know, what's really disappointing and why there is such a lot of wastage in online courses is because it's passive income for people that want to churn out courses where they don't want any interactions with their students. They just don't want to talk to them. They just want the students to sit there and watch video one, video two, video three, video four, duh, 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 and, <laughs> and be done. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and go away. I actually get upset because I log into my schools and I can see, oh, I don't know, 11 students are studying lecture three and it's a Friday night. And I'm thinking they don't need me. Why aren't they asking me questions? They're just quietly doing the work. <laughs> and I, I'm like, I'm not needed yeah. anymore. <laughs> it's a different way of working. To, uh, and I think one of the things with LMSs is, is that they don't always cater for the different learning styles and the different teaching styles. So I don't know. It depends on what people want, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Like, kind of like, which is what we're trying to like, sort of accommodate with our next community, like you said, right? So, kind of like, kind of like students mentoring, like, sort of other students are kind of like having like focus groups, something like that. So, kind of like within like, sort of every course, so like we thought of having something called as a public channels as well as like private channels. So, kind of like you could make a channel private and just like sort of add like a few students, uh, for example, like students mentoring each other or something like a focus group, just a small set of students. And so then you can have the public channels where like the students are a part of a bunch of channels similar to like Slack or something, again, like where they can mm -hmm. you know, discuss, uh, where they can uh, just like you know, discuss about like various topics in the course, something like that. So kind of like that, that would make the course more, more like, so interactive, fun and make your course stand out basically like when you want to sell it to students. So because basically right, so as a student, when I was buying a course, as well, like not a few, uh, not a long time ago. So, yeah, it's kind of like uh, uh, so kind of like, you know, so I just finished education about like a year ago. Um, so kind of when I was buying course, right, like, so I was always looking for okay. So I have this. I have another option. I have another option. Okay. So okay. So now like which do I pick? Okay. So they all look great to me. So and then like so I used to pick the one that had like more like more like so offerings to the course so basically if somebody had a weekly live session i would probably buy that when just compared to like a recorded courses like you say like video mm -hmm. one two three and so on again um yeah i'm so kind of like uh um, yes i'm kind of like moving on from that so like now this is our gamification platform that we have as of now um so kind of like we have a few badges which are like so automated for example uh basically for example like uh uh, yes, I think like master collaborator. So this is for like a hundred posts or comments. So basically for a student uh, during the lifetime of your academy, if they post a hundred, they get something as a master collaborator and like think tank is for like 10 posts and comments pro collaborator. So kind of like we have like a bunch of like a different uh, things like this. So basically suppose if a student like finishes this task, so kind of like they get a badge automatically popping up on their screen. So it is just kind of like uh, something kind of like a con congratulatory like suppose if you have seen games and everything like a hooray kind of like you, know, you have just got the badge kind of thing like that again and uh, kind of like we are trying to add more and more badges with various tasks again to and make we it can harder. turn the ones off that we don't want like i don't want people getting badges for getting for putting up too many comments got it uh, so kind of like for now we don't have that but like no we definitely okay, have fine. it you'll, fig the, you'll uh, figure it out yeah know. enough people will complain they're getting spam and you'll turn it off <laughs> yeah I, I, yeah definitely because like no yeah because like when we tried it you know so i was just getting so many bad it's like pop like hooray hooray i'm just like let me complete my course now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a kind of like, yes, like we want to like sort it out uh, within need, the next up. Would, would you mind if I ask you some questions that the forum are asking you? Yes, sure. Please uh, make sure like I'm not able to see. Because I, I don't want them to think that we're ignoring them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Danny says the badges look awesome. Um, uh, Lyle said thank you because he was going to ask how gamification works and he was wondering if he could see everything from a student's point of view, like to actually see what the student sees, what the student mm -hmm. journey is. Oh, and, yes. and and then we've got some up on the screen. Um, can we have course teasers where the prospective tunnels can view a lecture for free, but if they mm -hmm. want to take the course, they need to pay. So that's where you mm -hmm. can pick a few, you can publish publicly a few what are you calling them modules or sub modules and then correct. and then they have they have to pay to see the rest is that correct 
Correct. Can uh, I do that? Uh, True. Uh, kind of like so, I can take up like one by one and like and kind of like, so the answer the questions. So like, no, do you want to give me like so all the questions at one shot? Oh, I don't know. Um, I'm just yeah. reading them off of the comment screen. <laughs> so okay. um, I will uh, soon address them. Yeah. How about you? Just you just uh, you can you see the comments? I don't know if you can see the comments. Um, yes. Uh, um, yes, I can uh, see the comments on my side while the screen is shared as well. So. Yeah. Well, you go back to your screen and I'll read you the comments because um, we're just seeing it ad infinitum. So, and then you can go to that part maybe and show people how it works, I guess. Um, so are there more options for the teacher to let them put in Twitter, Facebook pages, Telegram and Instagram rather than um, their phone and email account? Is that possible for the lecturer? Yeah, uh, so kind of like uh, basically like our phone number field uh, like you guys uh, saw over here. So kind of like kind of like you, know, you can put in like so any links or text as well, but like definitely like we can have like you no know, social channels as well. So but there is a workaround for now. Um, so kind of like when you want to um, so kind of like you know, this text field is very versatile. So, uh, um, so kind of suppose if you do not want to put your mobile number, so you can just put in your like uh, Facebook profile link or your LinkedIn okay. link as well. So, so that people can connect with you. But basically, right, so I get the point. So kind of to have like a social channel, something like a Facebook icon and a LinkedIn icon. So that can be done. Yes, like an yeah. awesome feature. Required. And I guess for me personally, I'd like a book me button there because um, um, my students pay for the online courses. But it's kind of an understanding that they're cheaper because they don't get one to one action with me unless they pay for them. So I don't want them emailing or calling me to say just a quick question. The whole point of the courses is to stop that. But I would like them to be able to click and, and pay and book for a one on one session. I use book like a boss, but it doesn't matter which one. Um, is there a live chat option inside LMS says Facebook user, whoever that is? Got it. Um, so um, yes, and just with like a one on one events, right? So, like we have a separate portal for students also called like, like, events. So kind of like where they can see like so all of the like, so events coming on your on their academy, like for their course or their academy. And then like we have something called as one on one events. So kind of like um, so kind of like they can choose uh, the course instructor that they want to book an appointment with. So for now, we have a Calendly like, so integration uh, so because Calendly is free and the free thing uh, does the job for most of them. Um, so kind of like when you put in your calendar, right? So but you can ask them to book or like a session with you. So kind of like we have like a calendar, like so iframe embedding over here, so where they can book with you again. Okay, okay so but no Google Calendar, which would probably be what most people would use. Doesn't matter; that'll uh, all come. That's fine. What was the next correct. question? There was something about Pebbly, uh, Pebbly, Pebbly. Mm -hmm. Where was that one? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, and uh, yes, just before Pabli, uh, concerning with like live chat in the like, so LMS, right? So uh, for now, we do not have the live chat option, but like we have already uh, like completed that module about like 60% is already done. So also you can probably like, expect it in the next 15 days or so for the live chat. And then uh, coming to Pabli, oh, okay. yes, like uh, we are all, we are like, I guess 85% done with our Zapier integration. And like once a Zapier integration is completed, so Pabli will follow up in the next like three to four days or so. So probably like next week, we are like aiming for Zapier and Pabli to be done. Yeah, hopefully like we'll be done in the next week. Yeah, because most of us use Pabli, not Zapier. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. How is the, oh wait, here we go. What email marketing platforms does Easy Collab integrate with or do we need to send us emails from within the system? Got it. Uh, so kind of like uh, you have like uh, two options. So like once when Zapier or Pabli comes up, so you are free to use your, um, um, you are free to use like, so any of the like, so email uh, services that like Pabli supports. If you do not have a Pabli subscription, you can always use our built-in marketing suite that we have. Um, so kind of like um yes and like no we uh, uh kind of like we use like SendGrid on the back end so like when you go to app settings and like the integration so you can see a bunch of integrations that we have so kind of like we have like a built-in like a SendGrid integration so like no once when you like put in some of the details and click OK and like once when your SendGrid account is verified from our site so you can um, um you can send monthly like so 
emails depending upon the plan that you like purchase from us um, so kind of like uh, like i'm um, so kind of like we are uh, um, so kind of what happens in our lms is that right so we don't give like any like fancy like so email editor so like this is uh, similar to like a gmail editor so like what you can send in gmail or you can do the same thing so kind of like we have a bunch of options for you to make it like super easy and like we are definitely like uh, revamping the ui here um, so kind of uh, suppose like you can make email lists like so how many like, so email lists that you want or suppose if you just want to send an email just to the students of a particular course, you can do that. And or suppose if you want to send uh, an email to just like the free users or the pay users, you can send that. So kind of like we have some like simple options to make like really easy for you again. So that's how uh, that's how like, that's how like, the email works. And uh, so um, yes, and suppose if you want like you know, so additional like, so emails, you can either like you know or take a higher plan or just let me use pably and connect with uh, your own like this email service that you have so the question is under the templates button uh, mm -hmm. can people edit the congratulations emails that uh, i think you've got a template uh some above it what's the one above it? oh there right yeah, so yeah. can people create a template and set that one up so yeah, that if people complete good. module one they get congratulations yes uh definitely so kind of like once when you write the template and so kind of like this template is used for like marketing purposes over here so again, so kind of like, suppose if you want to use the same emails again and again, um, so kind of like when you talk about like congratulating like so emails and all right, so that all comes under course builder. So, uh, so kind of when you go to course builder, like I said, right, like, so these are all of the you know, templates that we have again. Um, so kind of like these are the you know, templates that you can make. So kind of like, uh, so kind of like within the course builder itself is there so that like, you don't get confused, like going through like a bunch of like, you know, so different like pages and screens. So uh, kind of like what do I- Wait a minute, you, you mean you, we have to go to two separate areas to send our emails. Is that what you're saying? No, uh, so kind of like uh, this is a template, right? So these are like so automatic like, so emails going out from the system. So kind of like, let's say that once when you finish the course, so like this mail will be sent after the course is completed. So you can put in your own subject and like whatever it's an email that you want to send and just save template here. Uh, so kind of like we have like various places where you can set the template for that particular task so that it's more easier for you to handle. Um, oh, we can to... we can go to different places to 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 we can go into the course to select it, or we can go into the email section to CRM to select it. It's not different yes. ones all over the place. Okay, that's fine. That's yeah. good. Um, and do the emails auto send on completion of a module? So do you have a trigger action? Yes, uh, so we have automatically. Yeah, kind of like a, we kind of like figure out like once when they have completed the module, right? So like we send you like an email automatically from your email and not from our side. So kind of like you no know, once when you customize your like an email sender, like I said from like SendGrid, right? So kind of like you no, know, we will send it all from your email. So uh, kind of like you know, they'll never know that it's coming from Easy Collab. Okay, so um, so it just will when they finish the module, it will automatically go out. I don't have to go in and click a button to say run the job or run no run it out. No, no, oh, good. No. Okay, yeah, it's all automatic. Yeah, so that's with that, and kind of like I just wanted to show like one of the like amazing uh, features that we have. So kind of like we have something called as a student. SRM, so which is kind of like a student -like relationship management that we have. So this is something really like unique to our platform. So this is like a CRM, but for students again. So kind of let's say like these are all the students in my academy. And now about this particular student, right? And now I can see the entire interaction of that student with my academy. So kind of now I can see like how many courses the student is a part of, how many posts he has published, how many badges the student has got. That's a lot. <laughs> And kind of like, and kind of like, you can also see all of the posts done by the students as well. So you can see all of the posts that they have got as well, and as well. So you can also check the notifications. So suppose from the academy, if any email has gone to the student, so you can uh, check all of the like, so emails coming to the student with the date and time as well. And based on these like, so interactions, right? So you can 
upsell them your services at the correct time. So but you can see if the student is really like so they interact with your academy or with your course, right? So which means the student is really happy with the way the course is going in. So and now like you can make notes about the student saying like, hey, like, let me contact this particular student for a personal coaching add on if they like and see what they tell. So like this really helps you judge like when to upsell your services at the right time to the right person. So so um, so that like, you can get the most conversions possible. So this is present for like, so every student. So you can clearly see uh, kind of for like, so all the students over here again. So that's like one of the uh, that is like one of the features that we have. And then like, so along with like student analytics, we give you like pinpoint analytics about the students so like where you can see the completion rate of the students and then you and then like you can also monitor the last login time of the students so kind of uh, so kind of like we have it in green suppose if they, if they have logged in within the last seven days and so it's going to be like yellow if they have logged in within seven to 14 days and like more than 14 days it's going to be in red and so kind of suppose, let's say the student was last login like 15 days ago or something, right? So you can send out a custom reminder to a student saying like, no, so hey, like, uh, like, no, so hey, like, so it's been like 15 days since you have last logged in, may I know like what happened? Like, do you need any help from my side? Or suppose if you see the course completion rate is stuck at a particular number, you can also send a custom reminder to them saying like, no, so hey, like what happened with your course completion? Like, so is there anything that you want me to help with? So kind of like, like I said, the mission is to boost the completion rate to a great extent and to like help course creators again. So that's the um, two features. I, I have a question. This is from the forum. It's from me. <laughs> Who is your target audience because i noticed you said the word they're students not clients and for me mine are all clients so i'm just wondering who your who is the target audience for easy collab got it so uh yes our main target audience is kind of uh, is kind of like mostly like uh beginner course creators that do not have like a lot of experience or kind of like yes or kind of like course creators that just want to make like fun and engaging courses and that want to stand out from the crowd basically um so kind of like uh yes our main target audience comprises of those that have within like four thousand to five thousand students that are still trying to like scale their courses to probably like uh, someone of uh, mihar level i think like where you have more than ten thousand plus students something like that uh, so because probably like your requirements is different uh, versus like a beginner's like requirements as well again but, but this so isn't a beginner's portal this isn't this this to me i wouldn't give to a beginner lecturer i would give it to uh -huh. a medium intermediate to advanced for, uh -huh. for me a beginner's a beginner lecturer would be using thrive learn or something like that um mm -hmm. because but maybe, but, and this is something I did want, I had on my notes to ask you, I think it's because I didn't understand how to set up a minimal viable product and launch today, like right now. Like I, I don't, if I said to myself, and this is what I say, the problem with beginner lecturers is there's too much. They have to learn marketing, they have to learn sales, they have to learn analytics, they have to learn everything and they have to learn film editing video editing scripting lighting and they're overwhelmed i teach courses at the university on how to build online courses so i know the how they walk in <laughs> and what makes them cry <laughs> and it's not me um and th this is a big intersection with lots and lots of roads coming in lots mm -hmm. and i mean uh, more power than you for offering so many solutions, whether it's gamification and email um, automation and and all those things. But if I wanted to come in and set up, um, what do we do? We do on day one, we set up a landing page, which says, which is the course front end, for, which is the school page. And it says launching in January 2022, all my social media courses put your email address in here and hit the button and you'll be notified when they go live can i do that right now with easy collab 
Got it. Uh, so kind of with uh, uh, um, kind of with your question with like a built in website builder, right? So kind of like we don't offer any website builder within the platform because like we don't want to limit the users with the features that we have with with let's say with the website builder. So kind of like we we kind of allow the users to have their own website builders, let's say on WordPress. Uh, let's say on um, swipe pages or wix okay, or like so whatever that means that you're you immediately not catering to the to the to the baby lecturer that's because now they've got two platforms to learn <laughs> they're going to learn uh, how great. to do landing pages and they're going to learn how to set up a school on easy collab I, it's not a criticism i'm just trying to figure out where your market positioning is because if it's great. a one-stop so shop that landing pages that's uh, so correct. So kind of like what we do for beginner lecturers, so which is not available on the let's say, LTD plan, honestly. So this is available for the monthly users. So kind of like we set up the course funnel for all of the beginner or the baby lecturers like you tell. So because mm -hmm. right, like probably like they won't know like you know, how to make the page attractive, like so how to uh, like set up the course and the back end, like with all of domain hosting, et cetera, et cetera. It's so confusing. Yeah. So kind of like what we do on our monthly plan is like we set up everything for you on the back end and like we host it for you as well so kind of like you know, so basically as a beginner lecturer so you just have to worry about making the course content and just uh, and just like making like whatever services that you need as well that's it uh, so basically okay, for Alex okay. LTD um, the services are included though <laughs> that well that I mean that is that's good to know I mean I think that that would be that that you must have a drop full figure so that they pay certain amount up front and then they pay their monthly amount. Would that be right? Uh, so basically like with the monthly amount, like what we have on the monthly plans is like you know, $299 a month, like with custom services and the software included. So kind of like, that's kind of like a no brainer kind of thing because like you, uh, you don't. Is that US? Ever have yeah. US, US okay. dollars. Um, okay. It's kind of with like the right. <laughs> okay, and then yeah. for somebody like me, because I have to have specialist landing pages to comply with it, Department of Education regulations and all that kind of rubbish in Australia, I would just uh -huh. do it off platform and then use this as the back end. Fair enough. There's yeah. lots of there's lots of services out there that well, a few services out there that that use that sort of thing. I just want to see if there's any other questions from people here. Um, do we need to have some coding knowledge for tier one? If yes, what level of coding? You need zero coding. Uh, you need zero coding knowledge for the platform if you have to use. Okay, actually, I would like to correct that a little bit. So, uh, like, uh, so probably the like, so only ever coding that you would need to do is if you want to use our built-in lead generation platform. So like what we have this is like, uh, so this is basically like a form. So like we have like a really simple API that you just have to paste it on your website. So like once when you paste it on your website, you can collect all of the leads. So kind of like, so how this would work, right? So let me just show like a really quick demo. Like, like uh, we have like you know, a staging server over here as well. So let's say on your, uh, on your landing page, right? Like now you have, uh, you have some, Thing like uh, a form that like students can fill up a form like where you are collecting like the leads for example like the name right so and uh, yeah. it's my number guys <laughs> yeah Yeah, it's so kind of like, let's say like, you, know, you have a form where you are having some kind of like a lead manager, whatever it is, right? So like once when the form is filled up by the student, so you can uh, see that like a lead coming in over here. So like I said, you saw my name, you know, and like, you, know, you can also see the submitted date and time. And suppose if you want to make an, if you want to make like an email list with me, you can just create an email list and start marketing directly from the app. Or suppose once when Pabli integration is out, you can use any of your email services that you want. Okay. So kind of like, now this is the like, only coding knowledge that you would probably require if you want to use a like a built-in like a lead generation portal that we have. But suppose if you do not want to use it, then probably it's like zero coding knowledge required. 
Oh, good. Okay. I hope that answers the person that asked that question. Lyle's just asked, but he had to step away. So he missed the first part of this. Uh, Lyle, um, the Easy Collab doesn't have the landing pages, the course landing pages. So you do that off, off Easy Collab and really it starts at the sign in for the students. So my understanding is uh, when, can we collect sales through Easy Collab or must we use an external cart? I don't know, Correct. I guess. Got it. Uh, so kind of with like payment gateways also, right? So kind of like so every course creator from like different parts of the world needs like different payment gateways again. So kind of like we have made like a DIY system, like where you can uh, have your own payment gateway. So you are free to use Stripe, PayPal, or like Razorpay from like different, different countries, like whatever payment gateway that you have. And like once the payment is made, so we have some thing called as a user access so which means you can give access to student immediately once the payment is made so like within like every payment gateway will have a place where you can where basically you can redirect the customer to a particular url after payment so let's say if the person has paid for the pro plan so which means like so after payment so they can be redirected to a url so like where they can sign up to your academy immediately so like a second of a so kind of like so all these uh, pages are fully customizable like where you can customize their like, image and everything so like where they'll just put up their username email id password and just like sign up with your academy with that particular course as well uh, so kind of like we have given that full flexibility to use your like own payment gateway and just like and just kind of like, redirect users after payment again and kind right of, like, so just to be add, clear for lyle the landing page is off of Easy Collab. The payment, for instance, I use ThriveCart, so they would pay through ThriveCart. But what you're saying is there's a web hook at the back end that would, um, I could connect and say, well, we got to wait for Pabli or Zappi or some other web hook system. But uh, I would call the API and then say, uh, is this student already created if so allocate them this course if this student is not already created create the student allocate them this course so it's from that point onwards i'm i'm is it it wouldn't be possible to do upsells or cross sells within easy collab then you'd have to do them through another system is that right um uh, not really so with alex uh, like, so upsells again so like uh, we have something called as campaigns that we have so which you can like, sort of upsell it to a set of students so like so this is like a kind of like a built-in campaign like once when the students are a part of your course so you can uh, make campaigns for example right? so i'll just uh, show like how a campaign would look again uh, let me just probably let, yeah okay so the campaign is already published and let me just show you because maybe like a few of them were asking like can you show like a student profile as well so kind of like you, know, you can just like so you can just like so upsell all of your services so kind of like you, know, you can choose the size of your image and everything so you can be like you no know, buy now so kind of like same methodology works. So if you have your ThriveCart link, so by now we'll go to your ThriveCart page and then a backend web book to, to kind of like give like more course allocation to the students. Again. Right. So okay. Like same and and yeah. somebody said, could they not share the URL, but they wouldn't. It's, it's, a, it's actually hooked in, isn't it? Like, um, correct. Correct. Yeah, that's so that kind of like a web book. Yeah. Like, now, once when kind of like Pabli uh, like comes in, right? So this will be even more easier for like so everyone. So kind of like you just connect it's an easy collab to Pabli and your payment processor to Pabli. So as the payment comes in, so everything goes like a streamlined workflow, and that also opens up the door to probably like thousands of mm -hmm. others app coming in Pabli as well. Okay. One question that's come up over and over again. All from the same person, bloody Lyle, <laughs> um, is is to see the student experience, um, and yes. you know this is a big thing for me as well because my biggest, the biggest seller of my courses are my students or my clients because once they've done one, they tell other people that they had a good experience working their way through the mm. course. Then obviously that's going to work for me, and there's so many platforms that are yep. identical it's like they all looked at the udemy student interface and went oh that'll do so you know even um some of the more very expensive brands like the new kajabi 
which I've also used, it feels very much like all of the energy is put into the sales funnel and none of it's put into the student experience, which is one of the reasons I was interested in your product because hmm. once we get them in there, it's not meant to be, oh, well, they've paid now, passive income, buy. It, you know, for me, it's, that's where the hard work starts. So, um, no, actually, it's all hard work. <laughs> um, everything's hard work. Absolutely. But I, 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 I'd like to see their student experience, and I can see that um, Lyle and, and a few others have asked that as well, that they'd like to see yes. how does the student experience a course. For sure. not, not your I preview, could... not the admin version, but the student yeah. version. Yes, so this is not the Elixir admin version, so this is the actual student version. So, uh, like, no, you, um, you just saw me like log out and log oh, in. Oh, your login in is a, as a okay. student profile. So, this is like a student profile. So, like, one of the things that I would like to reiterate based on what you said is, like I said, almost all the LMSs try to focus on the sales funnel and everything. And that is something that we have not focused on because there are so many like platforms that are focused just on that where you can create amazing funnels and everything so like what we focus on is the student experience so everything after they buy your course so that is what we want to focus on again so kind of like one of the thing with the student experience over here like you're seeing you can personalize the dashboard for the students so you can change the theme of the dashboard the color everything comes under like under the custom branding. So kind of like you now we have picked out that we have picked out that like the username from the like you know, student profile. And we have said like, hi, welcome to my institute. Your journey of learning begins here or something. So this is just like a really nice, like a warm hug welcome from the course creator over here. <laughs> <laughs> yes and so then like what um yes and like what you see like these are all the purchased course bundles from you so these are all the purchased courses or the course bundles from you oh yeah so let's say like this course bundle for example has like 11 courses i don't know why i created 11 courses in that course bundle but yeah uh, so kind of like so again within the course bundle right like no you can fully customize uh, like the way the student sees and now so these are all the courses that they have paid for and like I said, I'm like a physics fanatics for some reason. So I'll just show you the physics again. So over here, like when they go in, right? So- Oh, oh sorry, yeah. just one question. Does each course belong to one bundle or can I put courses in multiple bundles? Got it. Uh, so basically like for now, um, you can put one course into one bundle and like uh, we, and kind of like we are working on our way, like where you can put the same course into multiple bundles. Oh, good. Yeah, because I need Pardon? one course to go in multiple bundles. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, because uh, yeah, kind of like when we kind of made, I don't know, uh, I don't know why I did not include that. As yeah, there's just too dumb for me. But yeah, it, we uh, know we're in the life we're in the lifetime deal community. We know when things are first in field or alpha slash beta, and you know I'm not going to get hooked up on all the little bugs and strange things that happened when I set up the course <laughs> because it's going to be fixed. If not today, then tomorrow, that's fine. And I, I will say for the people that are watching this, that I've been incredibly impressed with your communication and your updates. Um, in fact, the one thing that I've sometimes done is I've worried about you that you're working too hard <laughs> because I'm like some of the other platforms, which, which, took all of our money and then sold the business to a Facebook slash investor. And then we never heard from again, which we won't mention, <coughs> Spayy. <coughs> um, you're there all the time, always giving us updates, always telling us this is coming out, this is being fixed, you know. Um, and I just want to point that out because I know that it's an important thing in the LTD community that the developer doesn't just come in here, swan in, show this product, and then flip back out again, and we never hear from them again. <laughs> so, Vanith, Vanith is not like that. <laughs> yes, we are uh, a lifetime girl so family. We want to see our founders succeed. Yes, Lyle, exactly. We want we want people to succeed. Uh, thank you so much for the kind words, and like, thank you so much for the support from the community as well, Lyle. Again. So kind of like this is uh, like you know, what like makes me work harder than like what my like 16 day like work day I'm sorry, 16 hour work day look like yes and like this just makes me like push 
to probably like 17 or like say 18 hours a day as well. So thank you so much guys again for all of that again. Um, yeah, yeah, and so uh, yes, it is coming back to the like student experience of it, right? Uh, so kind of um, so here, like so they can see all the courses. So uh, uh, um, yeah, so here, like we have like two options possible. So like one is when the students select the course, so they can either go to the community discussion forum, or suppose if you do not want to have a community discussion forum, so you can send them directly to this page. So kind of like you, know, you can uh, you can do all of these like uh, minuscule settings back on your like, so admin portal just to customize like what happens like, so every click of the journey in the course as well again. So it is like that. And uh, so like you said, like most platforms are with like you know, Udemy style are kind of that sort of a student learning experience, but kind of like uh, like one other uh, thing that we have is uh, kind of like within that. So like we have something called as a built in notes taker kind of thing, like where like students can write down notes while they're watching your video. Um, so kind of, uh, yes, and just kind of like when I'm watching the video, so I can just be like, okay, beautiful beach noted or something like that so, and what um yes and what i can do is like um, save the notes right? like, so i can always come back to all of the notes again as a student oh um, that's so really of, good like, i think coursera has that and edx do but i haven't seen it in many of the sort of more um consumer-based lms's that's really good Correct. So kind of like, uh, like the kind of we are trying to make this better. And like one of the feature requests that I got was, can the students like so export all of their notes into one single PDF? So, uh, so kind of like, so, uh, so kind of we don't have that feature at the moment, but that is a fantastic feature that like, so I would love to have as a student, basically. So kind of like, suppose if I have like notes in all of the sub modules and now I, and now I just want to like, so export it, right? So kind of like that is, makes a lot of sense, like yeah. you know, which we definitely like you no know, want to like want to do like soon again. My, my students, I give them um, my, my workbooks are on Good Notes. I don't know if you know mm -hmm. Good Notes, but it's like an iPad app, so they can write with their pens their notes. So huh. for me, if that was integrated, that I can yeah I can see that they use it, which is is kind of interesting to me that they that um, I haven't seen this very often before at all, the notes functionality. Oh, Lyle Definitely. said, oh, cool. okay, cool. You read my mind about the export. So he's happy with that one. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, yes. Like, would you mind mentioning about that? Like so the app or the website that you just mentioned, Lyle, like we just like make a note of it. Oh, okay. Um, students, and I'm talking here, university students, college students, not necessarily corporate students, but for instance, my uh, undergraduate okay. students use good notes, uh, colla, collaborate, colla, colla, colla notes, which is collaborative notes, or okay. the other one. I tell you what, I'll send them to you. But it's uh, interesting because it turns PDFs into OCR so they can actually yeah download the lecturer's slides and it all becomes OCR'd and then they can write over the top so they can point to a slide and then zoom in and write what they want to write and that sort of stuff. Um, I'll actually, I'll send you a video on it. One of the students has done a really good video on how to do, how to study medicine with it. So oh, that's one of the reasons I asked you who your audience was because in my mind, my undergraduates study in a completely different way than my postgraduates do. <laughs> yeah. Really, kind really of like, different, like functionally different, you know? <laughs> yes, and kind of the, just like how I said, right? So we're just focusing on the learning experience. So basically as a student, if you want the notes, you can use it. If not, you can just like watch the video and be happy with the content that you just like store in your brain. Uh, so kind of like we're just giving like whatever yeah. we can from our side to the student as well. So that like if you want to utilize it, you can utilize it. If not, like it's kind of like your loss kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. some people need to take notes in a class and other people would rather not. Um, I yeah. actually have a question because that leads me to something else, which is called learning styles. Mm -hmm. Um. When students study, and particularly when I'm in a room, and if I'm teaching for one, two or three days, all day long in the same room with the same students, mm -hmm. they have a learning style, predominant learning style, and then they switch between it during the day. 
So I actually have to stagger what I teach and how I teach it. So 82% usually typically of a room of, of video, what are called video story types. Hmm. So they're visual, sorry, visual story types. They want to see slides. They want to see activity. They want to see color movement. Um, hmm. A small percentage are text story types. They'd rather read dot points. <laughs> and then hmm. another group are um, just want an image, like an infographic, which is a mixture. And then another group are auditory only. And they always freak me out because they close their eyes and they listen to what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I'm thinking they're asleep, but they're not. They're listening. They're audio story types. And yeah. so one thing I've noticed with all the LMSs is, is they make you choose. So when I go in, um, so let's say I'm going to teach a module called how to boost a Facebook post. Okay. I get to choose a video Okay, that's for the video story types, but then I don't have the option for adding in the audio, the infographic, and the text so that each person can scan to the the way they want to learn that piece of content. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes complete sense. Like where the student can choose their learning model of their choice. So kind of like, do I want a video? Do I want like an audio or something like that as well again? Yes, so we can def, uh, um, so kind of like that feature is not present on our platform because like when you make uh, like so any 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 kind of like a course content on like so easy collab, so you can choose one of them. So kind of suppose if you want a video, you yeah. can just put a video. Or if you want to put in a file, you can just put in a file. So kind of like what you said kind of makes a lot of sense where the students can choose the learning content if they like. And uh, so kind of like we definitely have to like, uh, like uh, do uh, like development on that side, so because uh, because right, based on the understanding of it, right, like, so it might be slightly hard to kind of like uh, like do so much of like development on that side as well. Uh, but definitely, like that is a really interesting feature that like you know, we would definitely like put it on a like roadmap soon. Okay. I, just to add into that, because um, there's a lot of arguments in academia about whether there are learning modalities or learning types and styles and things like that. Um, but the head of the Facebook news feed said that they mm -hmm. analyzed 1.6 billion people and then they put them into story type data sets in their algorithm. And so if you're the sort of person who never plays videos, is not interested in videos, but you're a text story type and you like to read articles in the New York Times, you'll only get links and text. They won't bother you with videos because you don't play them. And they, they flipped they, the example that he gave was him and his wife are different and, and that they get different kinds of news feeds. And it mm -hmm. made me think that an LMS that allowed the student to choose, I only want audio and then they get all the audio lectures or I only want video lectures or I only want almost like a tagging folksonomy structure. Does that make sense? Like a taxonomy that's yeah. where you yeah. tag the content. I, I don't know. I'm just putting out a wish list there that we have a non-linear style of learning so that cool. those people that struggle with watching a boring ass video of me rambling on for 50 minutes, that they can skip that and go directly to the transcript or go directly to the audio or something else. So True. Santa, uh, Santa Claus, that's on my wish list. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's yes the so coin like those are all valid points and like this is like i would call it as the curse of learning for us so because of like so many different ways a person or like a group of people can learn so there are multiple things that like uh, that we could do and that directly like, impacts our development speed and time as well again so because there are yeah. so many things that we could do we could do that we could do this but the point is like how do you bring it all together so that's the challenge that we face in the back end like most of the times so because okay so let's say like one course creator wants that some other course creator wants that but the point is like how do you bring them all so that like so that every course creator can use it again so, um, uh, so kind of like based on what you told, like, so I will definitely like to take that up on, for like future discussion with the team, like for sure. And like, so I will, I will try my best to like make your wish list uh, possible soon. I have made a note of it. You can ask Santa as well. I, I think the key for me is even if we can't do all that sort of matrix sort of folksonomy stuff is 
at least if I can have a video, some text, an image, some more text, maybe an audio, and then they can them through and, and choose the bits that they want. I don't understand why the assets have to be separated and can't be compiled in one post. But anyway. Yeah. All right. Any other uh, questions? True. Let me see what yeah. yeah. Um so kind of like, uh, like Oh you were showing us the student thing. experience. Sorry, go on. Correct. And like one other thing that I forgot to mention while I was in Excel admin portal as well is like we have a kind of uh, like a digital idea portal that we call it a kind of like a digital suggestion portal. So this is kind of like a Trello for your academy. So kind of like you know, students can post suggestions to you. Uh, um, yes, and kind of so the other students can like, so upvote and downvote on those ideas. And similarly, as a course creator, like, you, know, you can post for something like, ideas saying like, you know, hey guys, it's a, do you want this content to be published? Kind of like, so do you want this content or, or like some other content to be published? Like, what do you want? So kind of like people can like, so upvote based on, based um, based on your like, so ideas and suggestions, so kind of like which will help you make your course better and better constantly. So this just kind of makes the learning experience better, and this just makes the students feel that they are important in that academy. So because like a lot of times we see yeah. like a student's yeah. voice is not being heard, but this makes them feel a lot more important, saying like no, my my teacher is like listening to kind of me, like what I'm trying to say as well. Okay, so that's this really is... good and i and i just want to point out to the you know the people watching um i do collaborative agendas with my students mm -hmm. so and i'll ask them I'll, it has to be gated otherwise they're just all off all over the place but i'll say next week in next week's mm -hmm. session do you want to cover this this yes. or this we have to get yeah. through all three but what what one is most urgent for you in your business or you in your studies or whatever and that is awesome because I can, I'll literally be able to go in and say, you've got till Thursday, 4 p.m. to vote on this. Mm -hmm. Go for it. So that's really good. Awesome. Kind of like now, um, yes, like we can definitely do that featured announcement, like where you can uh, have kind of like, no, it says like, you know, due in like four hours or like due in four days or something like that, the vote casted or something like that. So that's like a really nice. Oh, I'll just tell them. It doesn't need to have a timer on it. They, they, mm. They have to learn to do things by set dates without someone yeah. kicking them. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Um, so that's the ideas function. What's this yeah, one? Yeah, ideas function. Okay. And so uh, next, this is our kind of event management portal for the students. So where they can see like, so all of the like, events coming up in their academy. And suppose if they just want to customize the view, they can just customize the view like based on their liking again. So kind of like this is just like, how are they like it again? Oh, here. So kind of like, you no, know, you can see all of the like, so upcoming events in Academy. And because like, this is a demo Academy, right? So I have not made any like, events so far. So you have seen no upcoming events though. And so then like, what we have is that is like one-on-one -on -one events. So kind of like, uh, you can like, you know, so choose the course instructor that you want. So let's say if I want to book a meeting with myself, I don't know why, but yeah. So uh, it's a kind of like so I can just like choose the teacher. So like I said, so this is like a Calendly like, so integration that we have. And so definitely like what you've got a lot of feature requests is for like book, like a boss. So definitely we want to take that up, like as soon as possible, like once when we finish, like some of the key tasks that we have as well, again, so kind of, so this is how it works. And then with our live sessions, right, we have a built in zoom integration with our live session. So kind of, um, yes. And suppose if there are any live classes, right, like students can join the zoom uh, link directly from the platform. So kind of like we have is two this options. your Zoom or my Zoom? Uh, so this you will know, be like, like your own Zoom. Yeah, this will be like your own Zoom. So kind of you can, Good. you can use the Zoom free link or the paid version. So it's totally up to you again. Yes. And so kind of we have two options. So one is with Zoom and one is and one is like non zoom. So basically like what the like, so only difference between suppose if you use a zoom link is like you know, students can just like uh, see the video from within the platform over here. And suppose if it's a non zoom link, for example, like a Google meet link. So they're just going to get like a new browser with their Google meet link because, uh, because like we have just like so integrated zoom only into the platform as of now. Uh, okay. So kind of like you can have both, no issues with that again. So that's, 
with like so all of the like so offerings that you can give the students as well again and next we have like so assignments and quizzes so uh, kind of like students have two options here so they can either uh, check the like so assignments from their own assignment portal or they can also see like you no know, course wise like you no know, uh, like whenever they finish the course content so we have just kept it outside the outside of the course content i'm um, just for um just um, just for like simplicity of the students again so we have like so assignments and uh, quizzes over here where students can take that and like where you can also like and like where you can also like review it back on your side as well again now is um is this sidebar editable by the school owner yes. so that um we can add our own things in there uh, yes. Uh, um, so basically, like how it works as of now is like you can like, so edit like whatever is present right now. So let's say, uh, suppose for your academy, if you don't want like a digital idea portal, so you can just like you know, take this off the sidebar. And suppose if you no, do not I've been want adding one -on -one... stuff to it. I want to add a few more no. links. Correct. So basically, like for now, you cannot like, so add links. And like well, we are coming up with that like a new update probably like a month from now, which we call our like, so upsell engine kind of thing so we are creating a whole new upsell engine for you where you can add links buy buttons add like different places in your academy so that uh, you can just like push all of them to like so upsell or just for like free users to buy like multiple things we are we have like a lot of uh, we have a lot of exciting things coming up for like jan 2022 um, so kind of like where you'll be able to add like uh, a number of links so kind of like one of the feature that we have is like a number of links over here so kind of like so any link for example like you know, book a meeting with me or something like that again externally or like book a demo call or whatever it is and uh, kind of like just like a sneak peek of like what will come in alexa like, so upsell engine is like you, know, you could also have a status bar so suppose if you have seen like a status bar over here right so which comes on top of the web page or something again uh, saying oh, yeah. like, so hey, this is about like, so end in the next four hours or something and, and something like buy enough, for example, like, so apps almost like Black Friday, like status bar and like pitch ground or something where well, they we have We don't have bar. access to the header and footer, do we? So we can't add our own in, is that right? Correct. So correct. Right? So as of now, like, no, uh, there is no access, but like I said, like we, we are getting a full fledged module for you where you yeah, like which will definitely help boost sales of all like course yeah no all this stuff. stuff will come um aditya sharma i'm sorry i've i think i've ruined your name but has asked three vita integration for live sessions would be super and you got mm -hmm. a smiley face so now you have to do it <laughs> so <laughs> yes. three vita that that's on sas mantra isn't it it's one of the live yeah. streaming services i think yeah correct um, so kind of like I said, like, so Aditya, right? So, okay, so let me just go back to my like, so the admin portal over here. It's so kind of like where I have more features to show you guys instead of like a student portal. Yeah. And Lyle, did you, did you see that that was the student view? Are you okay with that? If you've got any more questions on that one, let me know. And anybody so kind else of like, is just Lyle oh. asking. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and um, just with all of the like um, live integrations, right? So we have so kind of like we have like a way for you to put in like so any link. So when you go to like live session and then click on new class, so kind of like you, know, you can choose a meeting type like so other than Zoom. So you can use Triveta, WebEx, Google Meet, anything you want. So you can just put in the meeting link and like no ID. So the like so like I said, so the like only difference is like no Zoom. Um, kind of like zoom links will just like so open up inside the platform and whereas if you use like a three vector link or something so it's just going to open up in a new browser tab that's all so there is otherwise so it's like there is no difference at all between the two okay yes, but just, like just a, small a silly question. question could i create a course called live lectures and then mm -hmm. create a sub module and then embed the iframe for the live stream huh there uh, uh yes like we thought of doing that but then like we scraped off the like so the idea because of security like so issues uh so because like there could be a possibility of like malware being injected into like so the, our system if we don't monitor like so the iframes properly so this is all of on a like, technical oh, side see. Yeah, because if there is a bug on, if there is a bug on like, so external platform, right? So there could, 
so that could directly like say, impact like the performance whatever is happening on like say, our platform again so the like, so unless and you until can do like, it with you know, youtube with a direct link can't you like if, if you've got a scheduled yeah. live with youtube you just take the that link and, and it says coming soon and it tells you how many hours until the live that is possible i, yeah. I just feel that lives yeah. is too often not integrated into the course that it ends up being this other thing you have to go find rather than mm -hmm. being you know monday tuesday i don't know i just would like to have it great anyway it was just an idea um okay aditya says thank you so um now we know that we can ha add three vita to the live class details yes, um, yes. and like uh, laurel just mentioned guys so like now you can do like a youtube live and get the little iframe from youtube and you can just like put it in a sub module of us so that is totally fine because like we support youtube so that is should be fine yeah no, I, I think yeah. i had trouble with the vadu iframe and i had to use the link but with youtube it seemed to be fine why do i think i try to work fine on my side so um so i'm sure like no uh sure like we can just like so check into it once more so it was working for me okay. so okay now one of the questions that which i'm sorry i didn't fully understand and i didn't write down properly but um what is the 100 gigabytes and Got i don't it. know if that means bandwidth or if it means uh size mm -hmm. of videos or what it is Got it. So like what the like 100 gigabytes means is your is the storage used in your entire academy. So be it for videos, posts or like or just like files, images, anything, anything and everything is counted in the storage. So like, you have a maximum of like you know, 100 GB or like 300 GB or 500 GB, depending upon the plan. And um, so kind of for coming to the bandwidth, right? So for all of our early adopters, we have no restrictions on the bandwidth. So it's like unlimited bandwidth as well for like whatever hosting plan that you get with the plan. Um, so yes, and like I said, if you want to save uh, like storage, right? So the best way to save, save storage is if you have a third party video hosting, because like, I think 90% of the storage goes down, goes on like video hosting itself. But suppose if you have a third party hosting, yeah. like Vadu TV or like YouTube unlisted, let's say if you use it, I think like 500 GB, you should be good to add like billions of images. <laughs> okay. Not billions, <laughs> like millions of images. Millions of images should be fine. So I think it should be good and for I just want to, I just want to point this out to the group, as somebody who's bought a lot of LMSs, and in some mm -hmm. cases return them. Although I try to keep as many of them as possible because they usually change over the years. Um, there's a there's quite a trap in um, what you need at the beginning, like especially if Easy Collab is is you and you're first starting out and you've you've put up a WordPress website with a like a, a course theme so everything's pre-done for you you just have to change the text and the button and then easy collabs working for you 99 percent of people will want to have probably two courses maybe three yeah. so the first one is almost def and because a lot of people work on funnels um, especially when they're first starting out and they don't have the 360 option they have to go with funnels the first funnel is usually going to be either a book, ebook, download, or a small free course. And what I've noticed with LMSs is, is they can be really um, stingy with free courses, uh, with people who want to do a funnel, because you chew up that hundred, you allowed a hundred students, you know, or whatever, you chew that up really quickly with a free course because every spammer on the planet signs up and they're not usually quality leads they're not if you yeah. haven't warmed the funnel and hidden it a bit then you're going to end up with just every bot out there trying to figure out if they can come and spam you and mm. i i think that that's um that's poor form especially for new lecturers who are just starting out and not realizing that the free funnel is not all going to be converted into paying clients. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the next one up is usually some kind of a masterclass that people, you know, is an upsell is uh, a, a better option. And then the one after that is the bundle where there's a whole lot of courses and then you get stupid like me and have 60 courses and then can't manage them. <laughs> um, 64 courses. Um, oh, wow. But I, I want to, you know, I want to point out it, 
you always look at things like external hosting to keep your costs down so that you load it up once, but it's available in other places. But also just triple check that you can have a free funnel if that's the way you want to go, because you can run into trouble where your 100 students are used up so quickly. Yeah, Lyle. And I've been caught with that. I've signed up and I've paid good money for a service and then realized that those I went through those limits in 24 hours. <laughs> and you have to know the different limits. Bandwidth is one. Um, so the, uh, the assets themselves, the video assets themselves, and the size of them is another one. And then the third one is the number of students. And, and also look for keywords like active students, because if they sign up on a monthly program, then yeah. you can run into trouble if they um, stay signed up. But if, if, you, if you put a limit on it of they got one month free, they're not active after that one month, then you can have a free course. So yeah. what happened there? Oh, no, people can see me. <laughs> um, that's better. Um, I, and I, sorry, Vanitha, I don't want to take away from your time, but I, I do think if we're having a chat about LMS, then, then you know, especially for baby lecturers, they don't <laughs> know all the little ropes, so we're just going to cover them. <laughs> uh true and like now which is like what like when we thought about like uh the kind of like building the product as well right so there are like two types of like lectures like one are the pros someone like you that have tons of experience in that and then there are like people that are just starting out courses so and so like with these two course right like based on our talks with like numerous course creators like we have seen like students buy courses based on like two broad opinions. So like one is just the brand value of the course creator. So suppose the course creator is already like renowned. So let's say if like Gordon Ramsay teaches like baking or something, Foshwitz is going to fly off the shelf just because of the name of the course creator. And the second one, like why, what we have seen like students buy is because of the services or the like, so offerings being, uh, being given in the course. So like, do they, okay, fine. Like, do you have live sessions? Do you have one-on-one -on -one events? Do you have personalized training? Is there a, is there a community discussion forum or something like that? Like, which makes the course like so interesting for me as a student to buy. So kind of right. Like, so these are the kind of things that we have tried to like so incorporate within the product to kind of like, so help the first. Uh, to kind of like, help the course creators who are just budding out so kind of like they're trying to like build a really good name in the in the market for themselves so right so basically at one point so eventually so just their name is just going to like sell their courses for them so they become the brand of the course so, like where they can just like make it so like you no know, hot cakes yeah yeah, yeah i, yeah, I so agree that, and i i don't give away free courses but then again i already have other funnels and stuff in place but I absolutely see baby lecturers trying to give away a free course and then not even being able to give it away or giving it away and then getting such a lot of low quality leads because of the way it's being done. And so that's always a bit of a, a challenge for them. But I'm not sure it's something an LMS itself can solve. Um, oh, a question for me and then one from the group. Low is the Gordon Ramsay of social media. Nilesh, I swear more than him. <laughs> Nilesh, <laughs> naughty. Um, I don't know if you know Gordon Ramsay, but he swears a lot. Um, I, I, uh, I wanted to ask because this is a, something that this is a trick question because I actually don't see many LMSs solving this problem, and it's one yeah. that's always asked in the forums or the Facebook groups. If I have a student join in January, mm -hmm. and they get access to my January live and my January. Uh, uh, videos. For instance, I want to do how to do an audit in January. So that's good. But then February is another subject and March is another subject. And then somebody joins in April. We always have two options. We either have to create a new course for each month. And then after two years, you've got 24 courses. And after three years, you've got 36 courses and it starts to become impossible, especially if you need to make blanket statements and change the description across all of them. Um, what I would like, and I've only seen one LMS do this, is a tag feature. So I can tag the student January 2021. So they get access to those videos and those lectures. And then the one that comes in in April, who didn't pay for January, February or March, 
doesn't get access to those videos. I'm not talking about a drip. I'm not talking about starting yeah. the clock each yeah. time a student joins. I'm talking about monthly access. Okay. Have you solved that problem for me, Vani? <laughs> uh, no, not as of now. Like we have not solved that problem as of now. Yeah, I mean, like we will definitely like so try to solve it soon. But you know what I'm talking about, and it's a really common yeah. question, right? Yeah, yes. I mean it's something that's really been cool. teachable yes. in New Zealand. Yeah, it's sure. and it's the um, there is an LMS that solves it, and it does it by tagging each lecture, and only those that have only the students that have those tags are matched to the lecture tags. But that's not anything that's going to be solved in the next month or so. I know that you're working hard on other features as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so like we can probably take it for like the you know, Q1 of next year and try to do that. Yeah, because like you know, this seems like really like important because like this is a learning model for a lot of like, course creators again. So kind of like we want to we want to like support like so as many like learning models as possible for like course creators as well again. Yeah, and I know what happens with baby lectures is they put everything up on a lifetime deal and then like everybody in this forum can tell you lifetime deals are not sustainable if you don't have an MRR. So, yeah. you know, to my mind, a free course is fine or a lifetime mm. course is fine. And then after that, it's got to be, if, if, if you join us next month, you'll get all this stuff, but you have to pay a monthly to get that stuff. So, um, yeah. Vinith, do you have anything else that you want that's, burning inside you to share with us or shall we bring Nilesh back in and make him do some work <laughs> yeah so probably like just like one last thing that I would probably want to share is like what are our upcoming features and everything right uh, so kind of like yes I just wanted to like share so probably like this is how I am right now but okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so kind of with our little upcoming features so like like I said like one really hard thing that you're working on is is like an upsell features like which is a whole new module by itself <coughs> excuse me yes and yes and so next like i said like zapier and pabli almost done so you can expect it in the next seven to ten days so and like once when zapier and pabli done so like webbooks comes with it and so like CNAME is also almost done. So seven to 10 days time because right, like we have seen it working already. And finally, like multilingual is what we want to take it to kind of like you know, support course creators from like you know, different parts of the world, like where they want to sell, sell their courses in their native language again. So kind of like these are the big features that is coming up. And like with that, like we also have like smaller features, like nice surprises coming up so every week, as you guys have already seen that. So that's how we do it. And just like one last thing that we would like to say is kind of like we also design, uh, we uh, we do course funnels for you guys. Yeah, but it's not included in our so LTD plan. But suppose if you're a beginner course creator or something, and suppose if you want us to help you, you can just like contact us and like we will try to, uh, and, and, and yes, and we will definitely like do it for you as well again. Now, are you able so, to import courses from other platforms? So if I was to come to you and say, I need to get my courses off of, I know Udemy blocks it now, but some of the other platforms allow the export of courses. Are you able to do that for clients under our services? I got it. Uh, so kind of like, like, uh, kind of like what I think, like what you're talking about is like SCOM content, like you know, so SCORM, like which is basically like a course export file yeah. that you get so that like, we do not stuff, support yeah. you not kind of like, uh, kind of like, yeah kind of like why we halted on the scam is because like we have seen a lot of bugs come up on the platform because of like you know, differences in like major like so lms's again so for example like you no know, one lms could have a different set of way that it's bundled in their back end and for example like kajabi may have a different way teachable may have a different way thinkific may have a different way and so then when you try to like so unpack it on your platform so like things go like you no know, haywire so there's a lot of things to consider and it's like extremely complex in development actually 
uh, so to kind of uh, to kind of like, sort of unpack the scam content so kind of like we have actually like you no know, halted on it for now but like we definitely tried it and i can say it was complex so like we halted it for the time being but like we will definitely like resume it back like once when we have finished like an you know, almost like other uh, features that we want to put up and then, then we'll take up scam with a piece of mind again what about non scam just simply um you know i had uh, teachable took all my courses off of udemy for me i think at the time i had 12 or 15 and then when i migrated from teachable to new zenla they did mm-hmm. the same thing and i know it's complex because unfortunately every video that came through got the same name and all the mm. thumbnails were gone and i you know at the end of the day you're sitting there doing 60 or 70 thumbnails all over again it's a bit annoying but with every video having the same name i didn't know what i was looking at <laughs> so yeah, i'd have to play the video and work out which one it was and then try and add the thumbnail to it and in the end of the day i shouldn't have bothered asking them to import import my courses i should have just done it myself but anyway whatever uh, but that was the question was is it possible for you to extract courses from other platforms i think what we have to say is not at the moment not in the cu- current state i'm not at the moment like itself like teachable probably with like uh, 150 million plus in sales if they have the problems so for example a small company like us would definitely have some issues yeah. with that as well because like not because it's not very straight forward on like development side a lot of things to like take and keep it the way it is to your platform again so it's really complex sure and i mean some of the platforms have an api because obviously they're delivering those courses through apps in the app store but others don't and there's sort of a mess and i would say you know if you guys out there if you've got one or two courses you don't need it but if maybe if you're somebody like me with 60 courses and hundreds of hours then you mm. might want to hire someone to help you um figure out how to do an export and pull everything in was there anything yeah. else you want to talk about or should we ask nilesh to come in yes and like suppose if you could just give me like one minute to kind of like sort of ask your feedback and the community's feedback on this right so kind of like one That's of the things that yeah it's so kind of like one of the really like cool things that i wanted to do by probably like you no know, q2 of next year is to have like a marketplace set up so kind of like and this is what we were just working on like the ui kind of thing over here so kind of like you can build your own marketplace with easy collab so let's say if you have multiple courses slides right? so kind of like so kind of so kind of like this is our first like so iteration of that like where you can showcase all of your courses over here so kind of make it like a marketplace where where kind of like students can like find all of this so kind of relics so, so kind of relics uh, so do you think you would be like so interested in something like this so like do you have any feedback on this because like so this is something i feel like like now would just like put us apart where you can make your own marketplace like with with kind of course creation as well what do you mean by marketplace do you mean that you're you're getting everybody together on easy collab and presenting almost like a udemy marketplace front end for all the lecturers on easy collab or do you mean uh, i personally have a marketplace yeah that is but then uh, basically for you having a marketplace so kind of like you can collaborate with someone else to kind of like list their courses on your platform as well so kind of like a marketplace Oh, or kind okay. of like you can ask with the other like the easy collab course creators to collaborate with you let's say for example you are teaching digital marketing let's say like for example facebook and somebody else is teaching like linkedin marketing so you guys could collaborate with one marketplace and like you guys could have like a revenue share with the platform so oh so there's side. some sort of an affiliate our oh, revenue share okay Yeah, yeah kind sure. of like you collaborating with like more other instructors who will complement your courses together and not competing but mostly like mostly like com- uh, mostly like me complementing like various courses together with like different like skills and like up skills and stuff like that so lao's asking is that similar to member vaults marketplace but i don't know member vaults marketplace i have not seen member vaults as well so but uh, we'll definitely like no look into member vaults as well So instead of me having an instructor come into my easy collab institute I think you call them school mm-hmm. um it's possible that an instructor already has their courses on easy collab but we have a unified 
kind of page where people are, are directed to, to yes traffic? yes absolutely yeah so kind of like you have like multiple instructors and it's an easy collab so kind of like you can either collaborate with them or maybe on some other platform as well so we are not sure on like on kind of its nitty gritties of that, but basically, and that is how it would work, like based on what, uh, based on what um, you just told. Okay, if it looks like this, I think it would mm -hmm. be a little difficult. But if okay. you move into story time um, marketing, where mm -hmm. you where we can actually say things like, let's say that I have how to do Facebook courses. And my friend has how to do LinkedIn courses. We have separate schools. Mm -hmm. If we can create a baby, mm -hmm. <laughs> a th third party, and, but it's more, we're very, then we're very solution. I don't do this anyway. But I, I mean, I, I already do this kind of anyway, but, but in a different way, but it becomes a thing like how to become a social media manager. And then they get my Facebook courses, her LinkedIn courses, so that it's, it's I think an, a marketplace can either just be choose something, and I wouldn't be interested in that. Um, mm. Or it can be, yeah. here's a bundle that solves a problem, and then you can really build a story time around it. Does that make sense? Rather than yes, a pick I this, pick this, like a menu, it's, it becomes a f complete bundle. Yes, uh, that definitely like makes sense, like where you could like bundle like uh, courses from like what you teach and like, the other course instructors teach and kind of like sell it together as well. So that is uh, something that is doable, like with the marketplace idea. So kind of like, let's say like you would want to bundle it together and some people want to just like collaborate just for like revenue share. Uh, but kind of like, so all in all, I think it falls into the same a kind of like a structure for yeah. us saying yeah. it's kind of like bundling or selling separately so it's basically like me together basically again i yeah. so i mean i think there are people i know people that i've worked with for for decades we probably started in you know udemy in like 2013 or 14 or something and then before that somewhere else um and they just want their courses on every platform because it's a loss leader for them. It builds their name, it builds their numbers, they get email addresses. That's just how they want to work. So every time I turn around, I go, oh, he's on here as well. He's on every platform, you know, that kind of thing. I don't do that. I keep my stuff um, exclusive um, and at the higher end of the market. Makes sense. But it is in concept because it means I can find someone else who has a similar value proposition as me mm. and we can unite for a moment there I thought you were saying you were going to turn into Udemy and put every Hello. course in an open marketplace and make them compete against each other and I'm like I've got a couple of courses on Udemy I just leave them there I'm not interested you know um yeah I don't know what do the guys out there think Good. Uh, yeah uh, so kind oh, of like okay, a yes. Okay, um, yes. so like, a DTA kind of like what, would be an open marketplace. I don't know if you can see the comments, but um, yes, yes, I can see the comments. Yeah. Now you're um, yes. now I'm we're not looking. We're both confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so kind of like we are not looking like a kind of like an open marketplace, but it's like a private marketplace for like a few course instructors. So just the people that want to collaborate together. So it's just like. Um, yes, it's just like uh, um, yes, it's just like a teeny mini marketplace, like where you can sell course bundles together, or just like you know, share revenue by selling together, and just like you know, push leads together. So kind of like you have like so many things because you guys are selling like complementing courses. So probably like the same student who buys Facebook marketing can also buy LinkedIn marketing as well. Yeah. So kind of like suppose if you have already got the lead, like why don't you just like collaborate with someone else and like help them? And similarly, if they've got a lead, why don't you take that lead as well? Kind of a scenario. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. And, and I think what would be interesting for you, Vineeth, is before you get there, you know, mm. you have to do a kind of a funnel to get there. Mm. Um, and I wanted to bring this up anyway, but I think number one is I, if I was you, I would get your course up on how to create easy collab courses ASAP. And I know you've asked about that and you're working on it. I don't think it should be huge. I think it shouldn't be bigger than Ben-Hur. I think it can be five lectures in the first one. 
and then add one a week. Like it doesn't have to be two, 2000, how to do every single thing on Easy Collab straight away. Another thing that I would do is use those back end features like the community forums to already start to create cohorts so that we know each other so that by the time you launch baby marketplaces, which is kind of what it is, it's not a big massive Udemy one, it's little ones, we already know and trust each other or don't, we know who to avoid <laughs> and go, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm not doing it. Um, but it means, you know, do that before you launch that. Otherwise, it's going to be, I don't, I don't know these people. I see them in a Facebook group once in a blue moon, but I don't know them. So that's one of the yeah. things that I would recommend is actually use your own platform to build community. Um, and the other one I want to say is I'm not against you. I'm not against a Udemy style marketplace. Um, as long as it's opt-in, like I might opt-in with one or two of my courses, but not the rest of them. You know, mm. I, I don't want to ever be forced into a position of, oh, well, you're not part of the cool kids in the marketplace. So you don't get this other stuff that we all get. And, and somebody's done that. One of the LMSs has done that. And I didn't, I didn't think that was fair. So, um, yeah, I'm not against a full marketplace, but I do, I think it's, it's a very cute idea where we, each other while we're building our courses and then the outcome of that is that we support each other's courses i think that's a great idea yeah um yes and uh based yes, on all the added added in the chat, yeah. yes and that's what uh, we plan to do as well yeah thumbs up for me and Aditi, can you see aditya's question that's what that's what you're talking yes. about right Yes, yes. So basically, like you can have a course A, course B, yo, you guys have your baby marketplace together. So then you guys can just sell it together and just like exchange leads. But basically, you, know, you have different academies because like, you, know, you want your students to be a part with you and not just get mixed up with like different learning schemes again. So yes, and that's the concept. Really good. We, we have some, we do that a lot in our collaborative courses. Um, and it's called... Um, a rising tide lifts all boats, meaning mm. if, if somebody's moving ahead Makes and then sense. they collaborate with some of the others and it helps lift them up, everybody is becoming successful. Easy Collab's becoming successful because we can bring in more people together um, and it helps SEO and all that kind of stuff as well. Okay, can I call in Nilesh now? Nilesh. Yes, sure. Hi. There he is. <laughs> Yeah, so that was. That Did you was, have a nice uh, nap, dear? I, no, no, I was listening. I was watching all the comments. I know. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> it, was, it was very interactive. So well done, Laurel, and uh, thanks, Vinit, for uh, giving a good overview. You know, um, yes, Laurel. I mean, considering the amount of experience you have in the LMS space, and uh, you know, you've been teaching at universities. Wasting my life mucking around on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, how, what, what, like, what's what's your take on where Easy Collab is going right now, and um, what do you want to see, like, it like achieve so that it can be actually usable? Like, where, at what stage would you use it, Laura? Um. Okay. Uh, frankly, it's not there yet. Uh, there's a there's a couple of things, caveats that I want to give people. One is my clients are corporate clients and government departments. So I wouldn't give them an early lifetime deal stage. I just wouldn't, you know, like it's, um, they're paying quite a lot of money for the courses. And especially if, because it gets, they get live training and they get classroom based training and all sorts of things. So um, if I was starting out, and I was putting up my first course, I, I would um, start with easy collab, but maybe not right now, because there are a few bugs here and there and things not saving when I expect them to and I kept putting the sub modules under the wrong course because it was defaulting to the first one and just little things like that. But they'll be, they'll be figured out in a few weeks, not an issue. I'm 
a little challenged by the idea that the landing pages have to be off easy collab and that the difficult problems like payment systems are off and i think in the same way that um Vineeth said that when he's looking for a course he looks for something with lots of different options if i was to show two platforms to a new lecture and say this one has a pavement gateway built in this one doesn't this one has course landing pages built in this one doesn't that they would choose the other one and and i and then the re us lot who are can, who've got britsy and wordpress and can you know put up a landing page in two seconds flat and we already have like three shopping carts including the one that i accidentally bought twice that's rubbish um it's you know then we're sort of evaluating i guess other things having said that i also understand the need for an mrr i don't know that the landing page is the one that i'd be looking at because it's a one-off purchase and it's done there's no additional value in then continuing to pay each month what what i but then i haven't really come across that model before so i'm still i, I don't like to say no until i really thought about it and and i haven't because you know it's the first time it really sunk in that that's how it works um I would say for 99 percent of this audience this group that's not an issue we've got landing pages for days we don't care about that we'll just go and buy easy collab and connect it up and we're good to go uh i like the gamification like i said i like the continual development i think there's a lot of it's a rather overwhelming uh service in some ways and i i would like to see a little piece carved out and really finished, like just that one thing finished, because it would be awkward to go into email automations and then realize, oh, they're not all working, or the template's not working exactly how I want, or, and then into the LMS part, oh, the course is there, but it's not quite finished that way. And then to go into the ideas section, it's not quite done, but that's just because it's early days. If you were to ask me in two months after Christmas, it'd probably be fine. Oh, I don't, what was your question? <laughs> I feel like it just waffled then. <laughs> no, 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 you, and just, you answered it. I mean, I was just asking at what stage uh, you would use it, and you you actually answered it. Like, uh, so yeah, I moving. would I would use it, but I would use it where I needed a collaborative community. Sometimes you put up a course, and it's like one hour long, and it's six or seven video lectures, five, six, seven minutes each. It's one hit, you're just going to do it. And I did one recently for a chamber of commerce for small businesses in a local area. And they that's all they wanted. Seven videos, stick it up, done. I would use Thrive Learn for that because they don't even they didn't want to manage comments. <laughs> so they weren't looking to build which I thought was a mistake. I think if you're a chamber, do you have chamber of commerce where you are? Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, yeah. There is a chamber of commerce. Yeah, chamber of everywhere. commerce. Yes, yeah. Everywhere. Lots of businesses join it up, jo oh, yeah, local yeah, business yeah, join it, yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. And I thought they were missing a fantastic opportunity to build a, an engaged community with yes. their small business members. Yes. But we don't want comments. Um, whatever, fine, let's just do it. Here's your social media for your Chamber of Commerce and you're done. Um, if I really want to have them engaged and I want them co-mentoring each other, pedagogically, people learn better from their peers than they do from the lecturer waffling on for an hour an hour and a half whatever it is two hours um so i would definitely use easy collab for that kind of thing ruhani wants me to say do you think kind of like think we should all buy it ruhani i think you should buy a full stack for every single person who left a comment here today <laughs> yes. and with that, a, he just fainted <laughs> yes <laughs> and with that, you know, I think we should, we should do a giveaway. So the criteria for the giveaway is anybody who is, has had a meaningful comment or asked a question. So there are just some highs, but we have, I'm still going to enter their name in the giveaway. And if they don't respond, then we're going to move on to the next one. Okay. So if you just, <laughs> we're high, still here. You need to be here. 
to win it, right? In, in, if those who have asked questions and comments, for sure, uh, I'll reach out to them. Also, those who commented and uh, asked questions, they've got multiple entries. So depending on the number of questions, I guess Lyle, Aditya, uh, you know, Ruhani get a lot more entries. And there is Venkatesh and uh, a few other folks who have asked questions as well. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. And uh, when, how long is your campaign, LTD campaign, on for? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, sure. Uh, so kind of like, like we are now like, so in the process of like so increasing the prices for, for our like, so LTD actually. So right now, right, um, so right now, like we have finished our kind of like post beta phase and everything. And now we are ready to like rock and roll with all like Facebook ads and everything soon for our LTD. So, so basically our final LTD is going to be there till like so early Jan or mid Jan at maximum. And then we are going to switch to uh, monthly. So uh, kind of like, suppose if somebody wants to get our LTD at the same price of our, of our little early adopters, so probably i'd say like a couple of days because we are like so updating our website with the new pricing plans coming in in just a couple of days so kind of like this is probably like the last chance for you guys to get it at the same price otherwise you're going to see a small price hike with the plans again okay and you know i would love to chat a little bit about more into your the startup side the business side itself but maybe on the next session, I think we've already done two hours in uh, both Laurel and Vinit, you've done a fantastic job. So let me move on to the giveaway and then, um, yeah. Okay, we just lost Nilesh, we're doing <laughs> Nilesh is, yeah, yeah. oh, he's yeah. just playing with the setup. Yeah. Ooh, wow, nice. that's cool. You know, I'm s I am tense with who wow. gets the deal. Oh. I want this. <laughs> like wheel of names dot com. Nice. Yeah. Rogues gallery more like it. Should we do a drum roll? Do, 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 yeah. do. Jesus, this is killing me. <laughs> Poor Rahan. Yeah, when is, the, when is the stop? <laughs> oh no. I, I would probably be losing it if my name was there now. Unless, I think you've tortured them enough. Press it. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> <laughs> What happened to Nilesh's mic? I don't know. He's done something to his mic. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. I got muted for some uh -huh. reason. I don't know why, uh, <laughs> but I'm back on. So, okay. So those who just said hi, if your name pops up, I'm going to call it out. You have to respond in the comments. If you're not there, we're going to move on to the next one. Those who have asked questions or made some meaningful comments, you don't have to be here right now. We'll still give it to you. Okay? Can you please stop it? I cannot watch this anymore. <laughs> yeah. and with the suspense of it all. Uh, <laughs> Is it tipping? To Did it stop? Did it stop? Oh, okay. oh no, it just went slightly over. It's, uh, it's <laughs> I mean, Venk, so, I'm really pleased uh, you got it. Yes. Ah! Venkatesh gets to keep it because he, he made some good comments. He listened to the uh, throughout yeah. the live stream. So, congrats, Venkatesh. And uh, thank you, Vinit, for that yeah. giveaway. So, Venkatesh, you get a tier one Easy Collab uh, lifetime live stream. So, congrats. On that, so we remove Venkatesh and then we go for a spin again. Oh, not again. <laughs> oh, what happened? <laughs> oh, hang on. I put multiple entries, so I just want to make sure. 
Oh, you got to get rid of all the vanks. Yeah, if not. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, he'll get two. You know he will. <laughs> well, if he gets two, then we'll just remove it and give it to somebody else. But uh, yeah. yeah. Make it short, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, just so everybody knows, I purchased this and I purchased a full stack myself. My own money. Nobody gave it to me. Okay, so you know yes. if I'm spending my own money, then it's important. <laughs> yes, yes, you did, Laurel. Thank you for the belief in us, Laurel. I think we're making You're it very better. welcome. You're very worth it. Thank you so much. Oh, Aditya, again. Danny, you can't. <gasps> Another line one. That's so, I oh know. Ginny. <laughs> All right, so Ginny. Yay! You, no, hang on. Ginny just said hi, right? So she has to be here. Can you comment and and oh my my oh you have to know if she said it if she's come back. So how do you know if she's in there? Has she has she already gone? Uh, you know. Oh, there, there she is. Okay. No, right. okay. no, no, she's not. She's not. Oh, Jenny, there she is. Yeah, yeah, Hi. Yeah, 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 there she yeah, is. There. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, so Jenny wins one and then um, Venkatesh wins one. So Congress, guys. And I think we are, we can move on back into this here. So, okay. So with that, Congress, guys, and I, yeah. I guess yes. Jenny and uh, Venkatesh can contact you in it and then you will uh set them up with a lifetime license for the tier one sure uh yes and just uh kind of like a uh, one a gift that i wanted to give like, to everyone that has attended the webinar today so because you guys all were here for two hours with us today right so like said so i i want to give you everyone a 15 percent off a 15 percent off for like, so attending the webinar right? like now we will post it in the comments or make a post in the facebook group uh, like okay. uh, so, can you attend the webinar? So, as a gift from you, yes, as this a gift from my side again. That's great. Thank you. So, yeah, you can. You're welcome to post Thank it, you. and then also when it, if you have a Facebook group, uh, welcome to post that as well, uh, because then you know you can get feedback and suggestions on your product. I really like the fact that founders get to do an LTD in in. Uh, you know, all the money goes to them towards the development of the product versus a lot of the things which we are seeing right now where, you know, um, a lot of LTDs are failing for the fact that founders get to keep a lot less money. Uh, and uh, that can be detrimental to further development of the product and things of that nature. But anyway, uh, with that, uh, great job, guys. Congratulations to the winners. Thank you so much, Laurel. Thanks a lot, Winnet. And um, we will we'll do another live stream hopefully this week. So uh, thanks again, Laurel. Enjoy your uh, Friday afternoon and your weekend. And thanks a lot, Winnet, as well. I think it's early morning. Thank for you, all, guys. Right, so. Thank you, Legna. So this was lovely being with you all. Legna. So hopefully we can just uh, chat up casually again sometime soon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And thank you, yeah. Vineth, for putting up with me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really good, Laurel. So just like love the chat with you as well. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See you. guys. Take on the world